Hello everyone, my name is Anders Nilsson and I'm the Technical Solutions Consultant for Learn Cloud and Learn Enterprise on SaaS. And we are in today's webinar going to look how, at how Azure DevOps can integrate with Learn Cloud. As always, Learn Cloud is a tool under constant development and as such, the product management would like to hear any ideas for improvement from our users. So if you do have an ID or an enhancement request for Learner Cloud, please make use of the uh, ID exchange and the product management team for Learner Cloud will then take those IDs into consideration. Before we get into the uh, technical details, let's cover some basics first. What is exactly Azure DevOps? Uh, in Microsoft's own words, Azure DevOps provides developer services for allowing teams to plan work, collaborate on code development, and build and deploy applications. And that kind of hints at how big of a tool that Azure DevOps is. And I won't cover it in any details since we will be focusing on the last bit here, the build part, and how we can integrate that with Learner Cloud. Now, you can work with uh, Azure DevOps either on uh, premises using Azure DevOps Server or uh, working with it in the cloud using Azure DevOps Services. And as you can see, both alternatives can be tried out for free, which is what I'm doing here in this demo here today. And selecting one over the other is usually depending on if you want to, your data to stay in your own network or not. But they both offer the same essential services, with the Azure DevOps services having the additional SaaS benefit of no additional hardware, installations, or server management. So for this webinar here today, I'll be working with the cloud version, Azure DevOps services. Uh, mainly because it's a lot easier to show how the integration is configured when I don't have to go through the hassle of installing and configuring local Azure servers and databases. So if we go back to the build part, uh, which is then where we can integrate with Learner Cloud. And this works quite similarly to other CI CD servers like Jenkins or Bamboo. So uh, starting all of this off, first we have a developer who is uh, keeping the code in a uh, source code management tool, which in this case is uh, GitHub, so that when they then check in their code, that then triggers a build job. The building of the code in Azure DevOps is done in a module called uh, Pipelines. And that is also where we configure the integration with Learner Cloud. So once Azure Pipelines have built the application, it then connects to and run a pre-configured performance test in Learner Cloud, then presumably against the application that we just built. And once the test has finished, we can now then view the results as well in the tool. Let's start with the demo. On the Azure DevOps services page here, this is then where we can create our free account. And after we've done that and logged in, we can then create our organization. And I've already done that here and I call it Anders Demo. So the first thing we have to do here is to create a new project, which is done up here. I'll make it private and just click Create. Once the project has been created, we have a uh, number of available modules to here. So we have, for example, a Kanban boards with the backlogs and dashboards in uh, repos. We can set up new repositories if we aren't already using GitHub, for example, but which we are doing that in this demo, so I'll get back to that. Then we have the test plans and also artifacts, but I won't cover these modules in this demo, but I will make use of the pipelines module here which is where we define exactly what is going to happen during the building of the application. And it's here that we will trigger our load tests hosted on the Learner Cloud. But before we can do that, we first need to install the Learner Cloud extension from the Azure Marketplace, which is the icon here in the top right corner. Uh, we can then see that there are a large number of um, well, uh, plugins here. So I'm going to just search for Load Runner. And then we see that we have a plugin for all three of the family. And I'm just going to use the Learner Cloud extension here. And again, this is a free download. So you just click the uh, Get It Free here. 
And since I have already installed that here, I will then get a message here saying that this extension is already installed. So I'm just going to return to my uh, project here. Now that we have our Lonely Cloud extension installed, we can now configure our pipeline. And uh, we do that in the project. So, and to be able to do that, we need to create a service connection, which is literally that a connection from Azure pipelines to external and remote services for executing it, tasks in a job. And creating a service connection is done in the product settings down here. And then we go under pipelines and select service connections. We click create service connection here. And then we go and have a look for load runner. And we select next. And this is then where we fill in the details of how to connect to and authenticate to Lower Runner Cloud. And you can use your normal username and password here. But since this is a service, I would say that it's a best practice to make use of the API access keys instead. And one of the reasons for this is that uh, API access keys won't expire on a regular basis like a normal username and password would do. But we still recommend that you do rotate the keys on a yearly basis. So the access keys are created here in the cloud. And if we go into the management, we have it under API access here. And we have two keys here and I'm going to make use one of them. So if I fill up, fill in the details here, then I give the service connection a name. So just fill in uh, Lunar Cloud here. And then we make sure to grant access permission to all pipelines and save. Now that we have our service connection set up, we need to create our pipeline. And to do that, we leave the settings and return to our project. Then we select the uh, pipelines module and click on create pipeline. And the, the pipeline is basically the definition of how your application is to be built. And in Azure DevOps, they make use of the pipelines coded in YAML, which are then stored in a repository of your choice. And in my demo here today, I'm using GitHub for this. Typically, the code of the application that you are using Azure Pipelines to build would also be stored in the same repository as the pipeline YAML file. So that when you check in your code, that will then also trigger a build according to the same YAML file. And but for my demo here, I'll just create and use an empty repository for this. And I do that in GitHub. So I just go to repositories, I select a new. I give it a name. I also add a readme file, uh, simply for the reason that the pipelines can't work with an empty repository. And this wouldn't be a problem if I would actually check in my code here, uh, as you would during a normal workflow. But since I'm not doing that in this demo here today, I'll add the readme file instead. And then I just click create repository. We now have our new repository, which also includes our first commit with our readme file. If I then move back into Azure DevOps and in pipelines, I can uh, simply refresh the page and our repo is new available to us here. We select it and then we have to approve that we can access it. We just approve and install. And once back in pipelines, we configure the pipeline as a starter pipeline. And we get a view of the YAML file that now controls our pipeline. We can also see that this will uh, reside at our chosen repository. So we can see that here, PC test and demo new. If we save it now, we will do an initial commit of the pipeline YAML file to the repository. Um, so we have our commit message here. And if I then switch back into GitHub and I refresh here, 
we can see that uh, yeah, my, we have our pipeline YAML file added to the repository. So the pipeline is the equivalence of running a build job in Jenkins. So the pipeline is where you configure whatever activities uh, required to build the application. So this is then where we also can add the running of our Lona cloud tests. And to do that, we, if it's not open, we open up the assistance here. And then we have a look for a uh, low runner. And I select the low runner cloud test. And this is then where I uh, add the details. So we select the service endpoint we created earlier. earlier. And I'm going to fill in the uh, tenant ID, the product ID that in Learner Cloud, and then also the test ID. And the test ID is something you can find in, uh, if we go back to the in Learner Cloud. So the test ID is where you go into the load tests in Learner Cloud. And this is then the test I'm going to run. And if down here we can see the ID of this is then 22. And then it's very important that before you click add, you just put the cursor at the end of the uh, at the end of the script and then click add because otherwise it will just add this code wherever you were in the script. And if you were in the middle of something, you might add code and it won't really work. If we look at the YAML pipeline here, there are of course a number of configurations that can be done here, but the more important one is the uh, trigger here. Uh, which then defines when the pipeline is executed. And here, here it is set to trigger when someone pushes new code onto the main branch on GitHub. And we can, of course, also manually run the pipeline from here if required. But before that, a new feature that was added in the latest release of the Learner Cloud is that the run ID of a test run started by the Azure DevOps extension is now also exposed uh, as a variable which then enables you to, for example, query Lower Run Cloud's public API to retrieve additional metrics about the test run uh, once the test has finished running. And to do so, in our task down here, we add a reference name like this. And with that reference name tag, we can then refer to the uh, run ID in a variable like this. And I'm just going to copy paste that like that. So from the code here, we can then see that I simply output the uh, variable. Uh, so I'm actually I'm not actually using the variable for anything, but it can be used for thorough automation of getting more details around the triggered test run. And by clicking save here, our uh, YAML code is then, or our updated pipeline code is then committed to our GitHub repository. And if I move over to uh, GitHub and I refresh the page here, we can then see the new uh, commit message here. But since we technically just did a new commit on the main branch, that then also triggered our Learner Cloud test. Uh, <laughs> that is something that caught me a couple of times when I was setting this up, where once I was happy with my pipeline code, I had apparently already run free Learner Cloud tests due to me saving the YAML files a couple of file, a couple of times. So if I move over to Learner Cloud here, go back in here, we can now see that my test has been triggered and it is indeed initializing. And if I select the run screen here, we can see that now this is starting up as any normal uh, performance test would do. So if I check my pipeline here in uh, Azure DevOps, we can then see that it is currently uh, running. And since this is a recording, I'm just gonna skip a bit here and wait for this test to finish for us. So once the pipeline and the test has finished running, we can then see here that it was uh, indeed a success. So all good for us now. But uh, this is then up to the requirements of a test. And if specific uh, SLAs or service level agreements have been defined for the test, which that would then be the specific release, release gates for the build, determining if it is passing or failing. And to have a look at the, for example, the output logs from the running the pipeline, we can then select the job here. 
and down here. And if we then click on Learn a Cloud here, we see the logs from the actual running of a test where we can see how it started up and also everything that's needed to be done after that. And if I look at the run ID, this is then what I added previously where I said that the new feature that we could also catch the run ID of a test and we can see we did that, we did indeed that. Uh, so if I then would have implemented more code in my pipeline by, for example, using REST API calls, I could have then used that run ID to extract more data around the test or the results of that test. And I could then further use that in my setup of my DevOps environment, so to say. So if we then go back to my pipeline here, and we also have then the load on cloud tab. And this is then where we can get a view of the PDF report that was generated by Learn Cloud for the run. And this report is then generated based on the template that you have set up in Learn Cloud. So if you have certain requirements for this, uh, or for the, how the report should look, you can then set up your own template in Learn Cloud and use that for your runs. And as I mentioned in the beginning, this was just a quick overview of the integration between uh, Azure DevOps and Learn Cloud. So there is, of course, a lot more that can be done in Azure DevOps, but that is outside the scope of today's webinar. So I uh, thank you for your time and I hope that this was useful for you. Thank you. Yeah.